Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE, CUBE Conversations here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, in the studio is Sri Ramathan, who's the Group Vice President Mobile Cloud with Oracle. Here to talk about the landscape around mobile AI and software, kind of how it works end to end and really the realities of it. Welcome to the CUBE Conversation. I'm glad to be here. So we were just talking before we went on, on camera about chatbots and um, I was, I've been very critical of chatbots. I mean, certainly who doesn't like a chatbot that's got a little glam to it? But they've been seen gimmicky, okay? You guys have been doing a ton of work with chatbots at Developer Week and in this code uh, program you're running. Chatbots is a nice face, but to make them really work, it takes time. Your thoughts on, on, on that and, and in general? Absolutely, absolutely. The, the digital landscape is, is going through a very interesting set of transformations and you know, people would uh, traditionally use their browser to, you know, access business applications or consumer applications. You know, that shifted to mobile, and uh, frankly, th there's just too many apps. You know, there's thousands of apps, and you know, if if you know, I, I have a daughter. She's a mall rat. You know, she's there's eight stores in the mall that she likes. Mm -hmm. She's not going to download those eight apps. It's not going to happen. She she lives her life in the context of four apps: you know, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, and maybe WhatsApp and she communicates and collaborates and entertains herself through the context of those, those apps. And, and that's where I think a smart bot you know, would make a huge amount of sense. And I think that the difference to making a bot successful is one that it has to solve your problem, whatever it is, quickly. It has to be smart, be predictive, and try to predict what it thinks you need and be right most of the time. And from a developer perspective, you have to have the tools and the runtimes to provide the right experience. And I think these are all kind of the reasons why this first generation of chatbots, about which you've been critical and other people have been critical, they've been justified in their criticism because they haven't met these basic bars. You know, they're not kind of easy to build and deploy with the right UX. They're not smart, you know, and they're not easy to use. You know, those are all like big problems. So, I think those are the problems we solve with our yeah. bot platform. And AI is certainly very early. Shree, but before, you know, that's a good comment. I want to drill down on some of the back end. You know, what unifies, what will make a chatbot-like experience scale? Um, but before we do that, just take a minute to explain what you do at Oracle, because I think you're in an interesting position. You're on the engineering side, on the mobile portfolio. What is that? What does that mean? Absolutely, so there's kind of three things we do. Uh, we build an embas, a mobile backend as a service. And this mobile backend as a service uh, gives you a set of tools that, and runtimes that make it easy for you to build, uh, you know, deploy and run and manage mobile applications. We give you, you know, technology that makes it very easy to find backend services and build mobile optimized APIs. We build technology that makes it very easy for you to build s apps that work offline, that store data offline and and do full duplex synchronization, which is very important for a lot of enterprise scenarios. We build a push gateway that lets you send notifications and content to applications very fast and rapidly. And then, second thing we do is we, we have some analytics infrastructure that give you deep insights into how, where, when, and why a mobile app is being used, right? And so, if you're a marketer, you want to know what features of the app are being used and what are not being used and how they're being used and how to improve your apps, right? So there's a DevOps workflow associated mm -hmm. with mobile analytics. And kind of the third thing we do is we build, you know, this, this bots platform that, that lets you build a cross-platform bot that you can then deploy on Alexa, Siri Kit, uh, Facebook Messenger, a Slack, or any channel that you want. So once you define a bot, you know, you, you then uh, are able to deploy it pretty much to anywhere you want, and it uses the same APIs, the same API and integration stack in the back end. So you're now able to expose your enterprise data and services, not just to web apps and to mobile apps, but also to bots. So it's an integrated stack that lets you, you know, design, build, run, and manage web apps, mobile apps, as well as bots, all with the same consistent set of tools, front times, and management. You know, the app fatigue is one of the things that comes out of that. When I hear you talk like that, I, I, I can see that connecting the dots to uh, app download fatigue. I mean, I just don't like downloading apps anymore, but I have to as part of a service I need to use. Yeah. 
I mean, the classic example is on the entertainment side, sports, NCAA yeah. March Madness. Absolutely. Use that all the time, and then it's gone. I never use it again. Um, and then it goes away. NFL's over. I was using that for a while. There's no yeah. more sports. Or checking my airline reservation, um, but I now fly multiple <laughs> airlines. It's like, what the heck is going on? It's a, it's a crappy user experience. Uh, you are making the case for a bot. I mean, you, you just made it very well. The thing, though, is that you know, Those are different companies, so now I need APIs, I need integration, Absolutely. data governance, all this is a bunch of details that is not a greenfield consumer app. Absolutely. So see, what is, how, how do we make it all work? What's absolutely. the bottom line? See, see, what's happening is, you know, in, in the old world you had all these client server applications, and, and the browser became the portal where all these apps, it became kind of this meta app, where you just got everything. All of your apps came through that. The messaging platforms are becoming that. They're taking all of these mobile apps that exist and they're aggregating their most important capabilities to start with, not all their capabilities, their most important and germane capabilities, and they're now being surfaced as bots, you know, within the context of the messaging app. And what's happening is that the experience today that you see in a bot, which is one of the criticisms I think you were alluding to, is, is simply not there. Mm -hmm. You don't get the NFL mobile experience that you get on the NFL app through an NFL mobile bot maybe. And, and that's where a good amount of work is going in. How I can elevate the experience, make it fantastic, but at the same time take all the capabilities that are in all of these apps and surfacing them through the bot channels, whether it's a voice channel or a messaging channel. So this, the, the bots are essentially just a, an indication of the evolution of where the software is. So now hardening that and making that kind of horizontally scalable because you know that at the end of the day, from my view, and I always said this, is something that I think you guys are doing right at Oracle, and I don't think anyone's picked up on this yet, is that you guys have been the master at the vertical stack, Oracle has been, as yeah. a traditional company. That's the way it was. Everyone had their own stove pipes, their own silo stacks. But the cloud now is a horizontally scalable architecture. Absolutely. And so now you have to have, but that also dilutes the specialization yeah. involved in software, yeah. which is app specific. Right? Yeah. So what's interesting is there's a new dynamic between horizontally scalable but yet vertically integrated. Absolutely. What's your thoughts on that? Because mobile really teases it out. All the action right now is at the top of the stack. Yeah. Is that where the vertical specialization is? And, and, and this is the chatbot layer going to be the traversal? Is it going to be the boss? Is it, I mean, where does this all fit in your thoughts? That, that, that's a great point. Look, I think you're always going to have apps, which is you know, part of the SaaS portfolio that Oracle has, that have deep you know, business knowledge and ontology and, and very specific capabilities, data models that are unique to their domain. Mm -hmm. And our PaaS layer, which is the team that, that I belong to, you know, is a set of capabilities that all those apps can use first, or that anybody who wants to extend and customize those apps can then leverage. So a lot of those common PaaS capabilities fall into that. And mobile and bots are an example of that, because each one of these underlying mm -hmm. capabilities, which is where the value is, a lot of these SaaS apps, they need the best possible digital channel to get their surface, their capabilities out, right? Or to take existing capabilities that they may ship with as part of their out-of-the-box out experience mm -hmm. and enhance and extend those. Sri Rabathan, who's here inside the Cube conversation, I'm going to ask you the, the, the tough question that's on everyone's mind, and it's on my mind too as well. But I think you know, most developers that aren't in the Oracle family yet are out in the wild, they're out in the cloud native, they're doing some cool things and they're developing apps. And you know, the classic developer psychology is, I want to work on really cool things yeah. and I want it to be relevant and I want it to be successful. And success is defined by either distribution on open source or some sort of monetization capability uh, with traffic yeah. and, and cash. So the question is, how does Oracle help that? Because you know, I see a huge opportunity for you guys where you guys, and if you look at Microsoft right now, they're essentially satisfying their own stuff, and you are too, but the money-making capability that you guys could provide to a developer through your existing business is phenomenal opportunity. So as a developer, I would think, hey, I could, um, would love to partner with a company that's got great client base, um, and so how, how do you have that conversation? Or, I mean, developers don't like to talk money, it's not about greed, but at the end of the day, it's, that, it's the elephant in the room of, you know, how do I be successful with Oracle, whether it's financial money making or uh, traction and open source or that relevance and the distribution of the, of the product? That's, that's a great question. Uh, look, I think from our perspective, our goal, our fundamental goal when it comes to developers is to make our software dead simple to use, right? It's to embrace open source, right, which we've done very successfully. So you can use any programming language that you want, right, 
we give you the best infrastructure to manage your development environment, right? Your development life cycle, so to speak. Mm -hmm whether it's basic things like, you know, how we manage your code on your instance of a Git, mm -hmm. you know, how we, you know, provide hooks into all of the common CI, CD infrastructures out there, you know, how we give you application performance management tools after you've built your app, and how we give, give you the best container cloud service so that you can very easily deploy your app and get it up and running, you know, really fast, and not have to worry about things like security and scalability and, you know, all of those things mm -hmm. are fundamental features of the cloud fabric that even me as a service owner in Oracle, we, we rely on those same underlying capabilities that the road, that the superhighway underneath us provides. So I think mm -hmm. the way to get to developers is to, is to give them technology that, that makes it very easy to build, you know, run and manage their applications. And, and I think that's, that's what we're focused on. If you had to answer the question, if I asked you, okay, um, Shri, tell me the, build, the building blocks, okay? I like to think in terms of building blocks. What's the fundamental foundational core element of the mobile as a service that you guys are providing? Well, our, our run times are all fundamentally based on, on web logic. What we expose to developers are all you know, uh, based on Node.js. So if, if you are a mobile developer and you're building mobile apps on our infrastructure, the programming language you'd use is actually Node. It's not even Java. It's pure Node, you know, and we give them a browser-based interface that lets them use any editor they want to build all the custom code that they required in JavaScript and upload it straight to our Node container. Our Node container is part of our application container cloud service. So it's, it's an ACCS model where you get to you know, uh, manage your containers, you can set up auto scale seamlessly, and you get all of those capabilities right out of the box. And all of our capabilities, you know, it's not all our. So if I'm an app and I'm like, I have a flash mob coming in, yeah. you guys are on your cloud are doing all the auto scaling. Absolutely, you can set it up. So Queuing that and all that stuff built into it as well? It's all built right into it, and you'll be able to leverage that off the bat and not have to worry about it. Yep. So I don't need to worry about having five zillion IT guys on, on provisioning any kind of hardware of any kind. Exactly. Auto scales on its own. Exactly. And I set parameters around that, is that Absolutely. how it would work? You can, you can select you have the scale characteristics you desire, and then we, we also let you deploy across geographies. You know, we just announced a data center expansion. You can deploy it right across geographies. You can identify availability zones and disaster recovery zones so that you can make sure that your data and your customer are always safe. Okay, you got AI around the corner, which to me is a great little mental model for folks to kind of understand IoT yeah. and mobile, because IoT is Internet of Things, and certainly Teslas are driving with software, and everyone can relate to the physical world, but no one can really grok IoT. What yeah. is IoT, air conditioning? It's like, it's kind of boring, kind of feels boring, but it's pretty relevant. AI gives a nice picture of that. Oh, automated, intelligent machines, talking, flying saucers, flying cars. Yeah. It can get a nice mental model. So I gotta, with that in mind, I got to ask you, what is the coolest thing you're working on right now well, that, you, that, that fits into that sci-fi, futuristic, absolutely. technical so coolness? When you build a bot on our platform, uh, you get access to your own slice of a neural network. And, and it mimics the way a human brain works. And the, the thing about it is, you don't have to understand all of the deep learning algorithms we're, we're like implementing, right? You just use it, right? We make it dead simple for a developer to model a bot, so the, the bot can understand intent very simply, right? You provide it uh, you know, with, with some training data that's very simple. We make it so simple, in fact, that you can be up and running with a bot that's live in a few hours. That's how simple it is. So I think the coolest thing is to be able to work on a practical application of AI. Like you said, AI is just this buzzword that's thrown around but we're actually giving you a slice of your own neural network in a very easy to consume way. And I think that's what I'm most excited about. I think one of the things that comes up a lot, and the word adaptive computing has been thrown around, all these cliches are out there, but what you're kind of getting at in this new world is, essentially algorithms have been out there, so algorithms can be determined based upon the data available. So ideally, you want the, you don't really, you should, you should never be in the algorithm coding world, it should be, algorithms get applied to yeah. situations. Is that kind of what you're getting at here? Oh, absolutely. I, I think, look, I, I don't think we're in search of a problem to solve. I, I think we're in search of like practical uh, solutions that we can apply. So we, we're not in this AI business for the sake of being in it. We've got a very practical set of use cases that will tactically add value to our customers. Yeah, device data and then data cloud, you guys have both that going on. Yep. And that will be a good input to the AI. Absolutely. 
Hi, Shri, thanks for coming in and sharing the, uh, the vision and the commentary about, around your efforts, appreciate it, and sharing the uh, color here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, you're watching CUBE Conversations here in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.